Okay, I was going to go back to it. I guess my recording timed out again because I forgot to delete the old recording from yesterday. But yeah, let's just unravel this one and see if he he is ready to go as well. So I'm curious to know how he did. So there we go. Yeah, that was easy. Now we can use him from the leftover bit after 20 minutes already on from that little, you know, little build here that we meshed together, the proxy. So after 20 minutes already settling in there, we actually finally put him in last and he was more like a... It seemed like it was almost like a hardened silicone already, but let's see if it actually still held up. So you can see here. Um, so there we go. It doesn't seem like too bad. Wow. Oh, I broke it. Look at that easily. So it wasn't a really good bond for this guy here. Because I believe we used it when it was already getting the most hardened. But it's just good to know though. See, there it goes. He just blocked. He just... Did he broke off a new area? No, he didn't. Same area. So we're gonna need to resand this guy and actually apply him again, or even just super glue probably will do the trick for this guy. Let's see, we can just get a good. Or actually, it did break a new spot, or no, same old spot. So that's why I hate to. So next time we know, when the proxy start getting gelled up like this, you might not want to reuse anymore. Cause it looked like it's hardening already but we'll just sand it back off just like we're about to sand the other ones it says it only takes 20 20 minutes let's, let's see if it actually kept his word so we'll try to do this one in 20 minutes we'll let it bond Trim them. There we go. Try to get all this left over. I don't want to take too much off again because we just want to make sure we get enough here for the surface to bond. Get some off of this side here. Probably would need it the most. See that right there? Kind of kegged on there, but it didn't really hold itself. This one seems pretty fresh still, but just give them a light sand. Like a little matchstick. And let's see this one here. Okay, there we go. Tempted just a new soup glue on them, but I was thinking of getting that proxy another chance. But let's make sure that we have the area here covered. Goes this way, I guess. hold them then we'll put a electrical tape to help seal this faith in there again he's just for a little bit added protection so let's go and get something to wipe him clean get him off from the debris and yeah, we'll mix a little bit get a micro cloth to hold these guys here Okay. In fact, let's go ahead and prepare this over there. That way we can prepare to get started on prepping it for paint as well. We'll go put these guys back in here. Take it out to the back or the side. We can start spraying him.
And then we're also going to be using the 600 grit to find it out. Again, this was a 150 grit, I believe it might say it somewhere. It's kind of ripped all apart. But yeah, this was about 150 grit, you can see. And this is going to be our 600 grit. You can see how much more finer it is. This is probably going to be your finishing touch of our thing. Be careful with throwing your sandpaper on here, even though it's still not really going to light up. We're just going to put a little bit over there. Prevent it from... Alright, so we're, I'm thinking of almost bolting it on there so it doesn't spray onto the hole. But I think it doesn't really matter. A little bit of thickness, we can always force the, the bolts to go back into it. Like we did the super glue. So the super glue can be forced in there. This guy can be forced in there. So we'll get this we'll get this coat of spray as well. Alright, so let's go and take this. We're going to mix our prox again. I did save... Where is that? Now this guy here. We open them up yet? Oh, we didn't even open this guy up yet. Let's open him up and check to see his condition. Now he just had a little rip here. This one was just actually brought over just to support it. So let's see if this this is the collar in front. So there he is. And this one I just use super glue because it's a little bit more. It might it has like a lot of oils in the plastic. Then super glue might not bond it. But so far, this looks like it's pretty strong. Not able to break him off. No, he's good. Let's see on the other side too. He had another rip here, a little small rip. They weren't full rip yet. See, super glue leaves that nasty residue, but it's gonna be covered anyway, so it wouldn't matter. But you can see there, there's a super glue kind of leftover residue there. Well, yeah, there's no really need to sand these guys down. These are these are not these are not like the smooth plastic. They're made to be roughened. See. It'll hold a little bit, but it does have a little bit of oil in there. Where this bond right here probably would work best with the proxy one. But so far he's not re-cracking for us, so it's a good thing. Now he does look pretty nasty with that little thing. Maybe we can do a little bit of sanding on him a little, a little bit. But I hate to do it because more than likely he's going to... Here, let's see if we can use that little small sand, sand on it. The 600 one, a little bit more finer than the 150, right? So let's see if this helps get a little. All you need is a little piece. Just take this right, right here, this much. There we go. So we're just gonna take it, kind of fold it a little bit. Okay, so this is a 600 grit, and we're trying to kind of sand a little rubber, but it might not be good to do it, but I just want to clean it up a little bit. So 600 grit isn't really doing much. Let's see if we can put a little bit more on it. Okay, so that's 600 grit for you. It's probably causing more than we want it to. So it's probably better to leave it like this, really, because if you look at it, kind of rubs it white a little bit. Now we take this guy here, it's going to make it even worse, I think. Try and smooth out the, the plastic, yet we made it a little bit worse. Yeah, see there? Creates a little bit white spaticle. That's definitely showing. Uh, I'm not sure we can actually hit this with a spray paint, but we might spray paint this as well black give it a nice little coat yeah I can't smooth it out anymore let's see there it goes smoothed in a little bit now but it just shows that little white area so I was trying to avoid It's just, it's just plastic, so you can't really use sandpaper too well on that. Just creates a really ugly, you know, not too bad yet, but still put a little bit of water to it, how it looks, see. Kind of wash it out a little bit. No, it's still the same. See all that white gunk build up there. If we spray it, we probably have to spray it all the way on this one. 
All right, so we're gonna try to pre-mix a little bit of this guy for the other one. This guy set up here. He just needs a little bit, so let me just wet the rag. Clean it, all the areas up from him. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Then we're gonna go ahead and get the other guy in a bit and see if we can glue him. Then we'll take these all back there to be a nice coat of paint, sand and paint. Sand and paint time. Okay, let's mix a little bit of this guy in here. Um, I cut that tie strap already, but I might have shoved it back in here. Let's see. No. No. Alright, so we'll have to cut another little snippet. We can still use this tie strap, we're just cutting the snippet part here. So let's do that real quick. We need to use it as a spoon. Oh, here he is, look. I found the other one and then this guy cut already. another piece of this guy back because the other one just flickered off okay so we're gonna use the proxy here remember how to do this one we're just gonna put a little bit and I think this time maybe we could put it on the other one too but let's just try to get a new area here in fact I might want to even Maybe target this now, since we have them sort of kind of open. Sand it down. Just so to help the surface bond. What I'll do is I'll split it from. Oh, look at that! It's chipping already. Oh boy. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna fix that one. Might as well try to see if we get a little bit more support on this guy here with the bond. Then we'll start sanding these guys out. This one did really well. Yeah, very impressed. It's gonna need to flex too for us, but this is really ugly, I know. Holy smoly. This one was super glue. So, get super glue a bond if it's a certain matrix. So, let's go ahead and put a little bit of this guy in here. And prepare our electrical tape because we need to bond the other one back. Probably reuse some of this stuff just to help hold it. So here we go. Just a little bit, not a lot. Alright, so where is the where is the cap? Come on. Did I drop it? No, oh, it smells stink. It smells like almost like deodorant armpits are someone's armpits. <laughs> That's what it smells like. It smells like a bad armpit odor. Alright, there we go. It's mixing. This is a lot. I really didn't, I guess, need it that much, but I'm trying to find a cap so I can close them right away. And but there it goes. See, black on black is hard. It's camouflaging. I believe it was I believe it's this side, right? We agreed on. There's a flat side to them and there's a round side to them. Ah. 
Oh, <laughs> what am I doing like that for? If I do it that way, it's gonna put pressure and squeeze more out. Not what I want it. I believe it's right here. I believe it goes in this way. It's a square peg, that's for sure. Or maybe it goes this way. Maybe it does go, <laughs> it goes this way. Like, make up your mind, Mike. All right. All right, so this guy here, he's, he's getting ready, so we better prepare him now. So let's target that one area that we were focusing on. There we go, let's give him a scoop. Now this is a little bit more weather app. I believe this is the one. Oh no, this is a clean one, so it has to be this guy right here. The one that we, yeah, it's this one right here. I think it is. This comes open this way. Oh no, it comes the other way. Oh yeah, this one right here. Golly. Here we are trying to get this guy fixed up and we don't even remember which side it was. Okay, so we're gonna put him exactly where he needs it. There we go. Now we're gonna go and aim for... Can't really see too well, so... I'm hoping that this is the right area where he's supposed to be glued on. Yeah. Easier might see from back here. You guys can't see it. All right. That says it takes 20 minutes, so we'll let this do his magic here. Look like it's getting hard already. But let's go and put some tape to help reinforce it. And then we'll start filling the rest of these guys left over from the other dunk. Okay, let's put this down here because I'll, I'll need probably both my hands to strategize this real quick. Okay, let me just get a new one. New electrical tape wouldn't hurt. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have the electrical tape hold it in place. There we go. There we go, a little electrical tape reinforcement there. Should be enough there. Let me put one more on the other end. That way, this the round part's not curving. All the way in. You guys can see that. Okay, while it's doing that, let me go ahead and get started on this guy real quick. This one here, we're going to use the rest and fixing our little areas here. But the thing with this one is, oh, it smells like armpits. Really bad smell. <laughs> we got to open it up. So I'm going to try to flex it while, while it opens. I'm going to try to smear this in there. It's, it's a little thickened, so it's hard to smear in there. It's not like it's liquid where it seep through and you can just blow the liquid to flow in there. So I have to work it like this. There we go. What I'm doing is just using my palm here. So I'm opening it up. While well, I try to sort of scrape this guy in there. As soon as he gets a little bit in there, It'll force by sheer closing. This will help. So 
There we go. There we go, it's not. All right, so it's got some in there in the cracks anyway, because I opened it. Okay, now let's go back to this guy here. And let's give him the, the electrical tape. He needs to get on the other side better. Try to use some old ones here. Yeah, it smells like armpits. All right, so here we go. Be careful, you're trying to put even force. You're not trying to force it forward. You're not trying to force it backward. This will hold it. It's got like a T piece, or if you can hold, it's forcing it to stay forced down on this thing. I think I got it now where it's both even like that. So we'll let that we'll let that marinate or cure in there for at least 20 minutes, right? That's what it says before you start touching it. I'll use this to splat it a little bit evenly on the sides. But I'll have to get my finger dirty. There we go. Hopefully that'll bond just nicely. In the meantime, let's go and get everything prepped up, ready to go, because we need to start sanding shortly. Uh, this was the biggest part that needed to be sanded, but the other ones we can still work on those as well while we're waiting. So here goes our proxy. Put this guy back in. He's putting it good for a while. So this one here, throw away, throw away. We're gonna get ready to transfer it over to our other box here to be able to sand and paint them. So let's do this and we'll keep them when they're freshly painted. We'll, we're gonna bring them back in here after they kind of dry to protect them. So we'll save this box for sure. And let's go ahead and just transfer it all into this guy here. Put them all in there. Get our sandpaper grit ready. We got our pretty much our 600 here. Our 150, just a little bit of 150, really the areas that we need it the most. Just want to make sure everything else is looking good. Uh, these switches here, probably not much else we could do. We're just testing them out, so they're fine. They're not going to be painted or anything. I don't think we should. They're also be covering these indicator marks, and that's not what we want. I mean, the buttons we could take off and everything. But I just didn't want to cover the indicator marks and I don't want to patch it up and just have black and it just looks really nice just the way it is right now. So we're, we'll leave this alone. This one's debatable too if we should even paint it. I mean the scruffle marks and everything like that. I mean we, if we hit this with a little bit of black it would show but we painted we got to paint it all the way. So let's see we're going to put it on the bike frame and actually see for ourselves. This one we can leave alone including the other switch as well. So these guys are prepped up ready to go. There's no need to paint these guys. Uh, since we're probably going to have the replacement coming in, if, we're, if this thing doesn't really hold, we're going to get those guys replaced. The mirrors, however, we could touch up on. Those guys can definitely do it. I'm thinking of, you know, even painting this whole thing here, even, well, even the little silver chrome part here, make it black too. That way it looks like all in one piece maybe. I don't know. I kind of like the little chrome bits, so we might leave that there, so we'll see. So let's go ahead and take that out there. I believe that's it. So anything left here, it's pretty much just this guy here. You can see here I got him protected so other particles don't just go and ambush him. He's kind of folded in one corner right there. <laughs> little flap there just to protect these guys. This is a nice, really nice hard cardboard. So after everything's freshly painted, we'll move them in here um, after they dry up in here first. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's prepare everything to be painted, sand and all. We're going to need some shop rags. Trying to wipe things out. We're gonna throw that in there. Throw all these other little pieces in there. So these are pretty much all the parts here that we need to concentrate on painting. Uh, two mirrors, back plates, uh, bushing, and then this guy here definitely. Uh, we just actually glued them all and it's been 20 minutes already. Um, I just feel very vulnerable still with him there. I think he's best to be able to tilt forward maybe to create an inner hook, but we'll see what's going on with him. We'll leave him taped up. He's not gonna really affect us when we're painting. Um, until maybe toward the end or something like that. So give him a little bit more support before we actually reach out to his side and start 
painting a little bit in that area. You can see there's a little scruffle here. I believe that scruffle is actually scratch mark that we can paint over or we can rub off. Let's see. We could probably rub off. Yeah, it's just tape, tape residue. See that? It comes right off. So that's fine. So let's go and take this and just kind of sand it down nicely and get that squared away. And after that, we'll wash them, give them a little bit of rinse, and then we can start the process. So let's go and take this out here. There's your charger there. I'm not sure what you need the drip charger. Okay, so what we could do is we're just going to go and sand it for right now. Let's see here. If I get a position so you guys can see it, I don't really want to put it on the floor. I'd rather have the cloth here just to help micro cloth. So I'm working on it. So let me work on sanding this guy first. He's the more sensitive one. And um, again, we'll start with a rougher grid sandpaper 150 and then we'll work our way back to the very lowest one, the bottom one here. So let's just start this guy. So you only really need a lot, just enough to cover the area that you're working on. I just go like this. People sometimes use a nice sanding block, a little softer. But I just really want to try to rub off the excess of buildup of that. You can see there, that plastic there. It's definitely not going to be smooth as it once was. See that? It's coming. There you go. Very nice. Just kind of concentrate on that filling area. We're not trying to sand it, make an indent or anything like that, or making it weaker or anything like that. And we might just want to maybe just sand the top, really, just to there it goes smooth now. Sanding helps, but you don't want to sand too much where you eat the, actually the teeth, the lip here. There's a little lip. See, there's a little lip here. If you sand it short enough, it's not going to have anything to bite on. So be careful with that area. See, we, did, we definitely want to take out the little bumps of it, but we don't want to ruin the lip. Okay, so this part here is it's a little bumpy, so we'll get that sand away. Don't worry, when we spray it, it's going to cover it anyway. We're going to give it a rinse before we spray it, of course. Get all the sand dust off of it. Nice and smooth. Almost like you can't feel that bump. You don't want to take too much off again, care be careful. There's the chip paint. The primer will stick much better once you have a clean surface to work with. There we go. Kind of nice and smooth in that area. Get any kind of gunk or dirt. This guy right here looks like he can peel off. Look at that. Look at that. Paint peel. Sand him there. <laughs> as far as the inside goes, it's not too shabby to leave it on there. It creates a little bit thicker plate. So we might not even have to worry about the inside part. Just like we did with this one when we hazed it. We kind of hazed him a little bit. See there? A little crusty haze. We'll leave that on there. A little crusty there. going to help. But you can see here I'm flexing him. I don't see him too much anymore. Actually does the trick. 20 minutes is all it takes. Um, let's make sure this guy's smooth before we paint him as well. So he's good to go. He's super glue again. I don't want to mess with him too much. 
Uh, this area here could be sanded a little bit better. There we go. So I think this will be fine. Once we hit with a spray can, we won't probably be able to see most of this anymore. They'll be smoothing out. We get a nice even coat anyway. Okay, we're gonna go back and give them the 600 grade in a little bit here. 600 bit just takes out all these little finer grid marks. By N3, uh, 600 grid. P600 came from this little piece. So here we go. I want to see, show you the difference. You can see how scratched that is. That's 150 grid. With this guy right here. So we're gonna take him out of the picture. We're gonna give him this grid. See how, like I said, like printing resolution. The more DPI, is more, the more finer it is in detail. So it's hopefully gonna help. The 600 hopefully will help smoothing this you know 150 grid out so let's check to see what it can do so here we go i'm not really an expert in sanding but i think you're supposed to work gradually but we're jumping from 150 to 600 already so let's see what it does it's almost like a nail polish look at that it does smoothen it out but it almost looks like it eats up really quickly too i like i think the paper alone could probably scratch more than this guy can scratch but yeah, so this is kind of almost buffing out the, so when we paint it, we won't see those little, little scratch marks, you know? Much more smoother. This is great. Can I keep, look at that. Look how much it took out already. You can go through this guy quite a bit. Okay, we'll fold it to the next level keep working it make sure we take out all the little bigger grids marks like see how that one is that was left over from 150 grid it's amazing how it can actually um, the sand can actually stay in the grid pretty damn good huh okay it's getting warm I'm gonna take off my jacket Nice. <laughs> there we go. This is so much more smoother. Look at that. So yeah, that's the difference between using these grids. Um, this one we could probably do with the, the 600 grid too. Probably don't want to scratch it up too bad. Because uh, it's still a nice clean one. It's in its own insulator. So we'll take the 600 grid and just go ahead and just kind of rough out the edges here a little bit. Maybe just try and get all the paint off really. There we go, it's nice and smooth. Wow, I see that you wanna be able to glide your hand, not have to feel, I can still, if I close my eyes, I can still feel there's a little crack here, but it wasn't that kind of hard felt before, you know? So keep working your 600 grid. You probably would've been better off if you're doing a paint touch up like this to just use 600 grid. And then work our way to it, maybe even finer grid like 1200 or something so it's not bad we're learning actually how to sand too now <laughs> never thought I had to really do all this but I guess a Chinese scooter everything breaks on it eventually you're gonna have to learn how to do everything on it from restoring it to painting its plastic back pretty fascinating stuff just want to get it to a smooth and I think we're getting there I want to be able to close my eyes and not feel this. That's the that's what we're going for. So far, so good. You can see there. Did we work on this guy yet? I don't think we did much. 
Okay, so there we go. We got we almost used up. Try and use every okay, bit you can. A little bit left here in the side. I'll use that. You'll feel it. You feel that you have some grid still left on your sandpaper. I'm lifting them up because I don't want to keep banging them like this on the ground. There you go, see nice and smooth. Nice and smooth contour. Wow, I feel like I'm a pro a little bit. Now I'm gonna go and leave that plastic bond agent there. Um, I just, there's no reason for me to try to break it. I mean, it's just from the inside only and it creates a little bit more of a, a more of a thicker bond for it here. But if you do don't like it, you can always rub it off. It's getting warm out here, it was raining earlier. So this is good uh, sunlight here for good paint. The rain kind of makes sure all the, the damp environment is kind of down. So that's good for us right now. So we should start. All right, so this guy's ready almost. Now I know this looks hideous, but it's smooth. You can't really feel it. And that's where you want the paint to be able to penetrate. It's a paint that has primer already in there, so it'll stick a little bit better. I'm not even sure I have to worry about plastic with primer, but it's the paint, the spray can has it built in. So now this one, see, I can still feel it. So, okay, for some reason uh, against the camera can't tolerate a little bit of heat. <laughs> so I guess it's the only part right now where it actually keeps on um, pretty much shutting off the camera. So that's one other challenge. Well, anyway, while it was shutting off, I went ahead and uh, sand this down so you guys can actually see it. Also, I didn't actually show you guys the light test. So if you look at it through the light now, this is with the epoxy. You can see here. It's got most of it already on there. Might be a little slit right here. Maybe this is a very thin or not even exposed to the proxy, but for the most part, you can see a little difference than what it was uh, compared to super glue like last time. Let's see if I can aim it a little bit better. There we go. So there you can see the light test to it. And then this is purely super glue right here on this side here. Let's see, where is it? I can't even tell anymore. Uh, <laughs> there it goes right here. Somewhere right here, yeah, right there. So let's, let's look at this guy here from the other side. Be careful. Sometimes you can see that the paint is removed. That's why it's shining a little bit more bolder. But for the most part, yeah, super glue. This one did a really good number uh, because the fact is it was already half of it was still glued on there, which is neat. Now we're moving on to here. It just seems like that's, that's really bad. The camera is not be able to take the heat from the direct sunlight. So I'm trying to cover it. Same time, I want to cover you. Now, if you want to actually start and go with a, sm a 600 grid, this is what happens. You can see here, it doesn't do anything but kind of buff it out a little bit, lightening it. So what you want to do is maybe hit it with at least a heavier one to get a little bit more teeth in there. So I go with the 150. You can see how much more it it actually takes out the chunks. There we go. See that right there? I just can't get that. See this one right here? I took it out first with the 150 grid, like this. And then I buffer it out with the, the 600 after that to smoothen out the, the sharp. Again, you want to prepare all this for primering paint, you know, so that way it will stick in a little bit better. And also, you know, get your, you're not just trying to spray over on top. See like right there? I know we did uh, JB Weld on this. And again, we might not even use these guys' parts again, but we'll have it ready next time. I think these will pretty much be okay. <sighs> See that right there? And then you can go back with your uh, 600 grid and try to, you know, smoothen it out. But if you try to smooth it out first, without doing this, you won't get this nice effect here where it actually, you know, scrapes off the variety. Because this thing will not, see that right there? It will not actually take that big chunk of, of paint off that you need to smooth in. And that thing is supposed to come off. Or it's supposed to, you know, change the shape of the diameter, see? I'll try to rub it like this all day long with the 600 grid. It's going to take me forever. So what you want to do is, you want to come over here. Try to get the 125 grid and look at this. See that? Now it's a really ch changing shape for you. So that means it's ready. Now you can smooth it out. See that? It's finally digging into the metal. There you go. See that? It opens it up a little bit more smoother for you. <sighs> Not smoother, but it opens up a little bit more where it takes out. Then you can go ahead and trace it with the 600 grid. That way, even out all the scratches, the little scratches that the 150 left behind. Or you can work your way gradually. You might want to squeeze a 300 in between. Then work your way to the 600. 
if you really want to get it all fine-tuned there. But yeah, since it's not cold weather, it's direct sunlight, we get, we get great pictures, but however, the sun is causing my phone to just keep shutting off, so that's why I have to keep on uh, resetting it and re hitting the record button once I get it to cool down just slightly a little bit, maybe for like a couple minutes, I have to wait. But yeah, try to get all this little area out too because we want our, our new um, JB Weld, when we put it in there, we want the teeth to pretty much dig in firmly on that one. So this guy's almost ready. I'm thinking of just go ahead and spray paint everything here. Uh, it's gonna be a, quite a bit of a mess. Might be even a one-tone setup, who knows. I even tried to scrape some of the, <laughs> the hard plastic here from this guy. Uh, maybe I can retouch him up here or something like that. I hate to scrape him here. But let's see what we can do. Uh, this one here, we scrape him. This is what's helping, helping him grip, sort of. See, if I use the 1000, I can barely get him off on there. If I use this guy here, it'll take him flat out off, period. He won't have any more of that nasty residue. Or I mean, not nasty, but there's, he was supposed to have it there so that way that the thing can grip on there. Now you can see, look, I kind of took it all off now. That's okay, we're gonna spray paint it freshly new. I thought there was like a little markings of some kind of lettering, but it's not. It's actually just the marking from the little star washer. There we go. We'll give him a fresh paint. So it's not gonna rubberize him, unfortunately, but I think it'll still work just as good. That way we get some of this old one stuff out of there. If you're gonna do it, you might as well do it all the way. <sighs> See, he's just a block of aluminum uh, that was coated with some kind of rubberized enamel. See, this right here, it says ram mount on there as well. So, again, you wanna use a harsher for the reason of making sure that you got a good surface when it paints, it sticks onto it. It's not sticking onto some old scrap paint that's left behind. And that's not that's why you're purposely doing this you're not doing this to create more of a mess <laughs> you're doing this to prepare the surface to get a good sprayed on which we will now I don't want to rub the paint off too much so I'm gonna leave it this okay follow <laughs> follow with a little bit more of the 600 grid for this guy so that's why we're using a little bit more more 600 grid just rip a small piece out for yourself keep working it it's gonna take some prep time to get some good exposure out there. Then we're gonna smooth them up, sort of like clean up all his deep scratches. So when we hit him again with fresh um, primer paint, he'll have that there. And this thing we're gonna wash out too if there's any grease or anything that caught, could cause a stain not to stick. I believe this might be some grease buildup or something in here. That's pretty nasty. If it's nasty, we might even take this off, period. He has pretty strong blue Loctite, so I just really didn't want to do it that way. So we'll just we'll just spray around him. And we'll make sure we'll try to cover the mirror as much as we can. And if we don't, if we get onto it, remember again, we got that throttle cleaner. That shit will take it off the mirror, no problem. And it, also, we can use a razor blade. Worst come to worst. Scrap that off. Okay, so we're almost there. We got this part, this part. This is mainly the three areas. Other uh, than their back plate. Should have one more back plate laying around here. I'm not seeing that back plate, so I might have left it in there somewhere. But this mirror here, if there's any finer areas to paint, we could. I'm going to use this softer one here because I don't want to damage the smooth surface. So I'm there. We go. I'm just buffing it out. Just getting any kind of leftover paint that just needs to be chipped off. Let it chip off now. There we go. <sighs> Preparing it. We're gonna have to get this a really nice, evenly coat on all of them. <sighs> so we might have to do the spray on all of them actually, even though we're mainly focusing on light chip areas like this guy right here. So I'll turn this around, give him a little. Now the sun's going down, so the... temporarily, let's say, because it's still afternoon hour. There we go. We'll have to tape these guys up pretty good or lay them flat down like this so they don't get paint on them and we can just kind of spray it like, but I don't know it will ricochet. So we'll do our best. We'll see how that one goes. But there we go, this guy too. Anywhere where paint's exposed, you gotta expose it some more just to roughen it up. And that way prepare the teeth of the primer to start building in. There we go, now we got some cool breeze or something that should keep the recording here a little bit longer. 
see that I wouldn't do this if I wasn't planning to paint it because you definitely don't want to just go and start you know sanding your stuff and not paint it because that just looks even more horrible when that little exposed area uh, we're not gonna clear coat it. I know clear coat is great I wish I did clear coat on the belly of our, our th uh, of our um, our, of our um, scooter that would have been awesome but since I didn't buy any clear coat it's too late now I assembled it on there um, it's harder to paint it because you have so many other sectors glued to it that's not black Okay, so this is good. We try to even hit this guy here with some sandpaper. And now you can see the difference between certain plastic. This is more like a rubberized plastic. It's still hard, but it's still rubberized. And it didn't do too well on here. You can see there's the little white spots here. So I'll take the 600 grid and if I work at it, I probably will just sh change the pattern of the plastic molding, but I wouldn't really fix it. So probably gonna give him a quote as well we'll see how it goes if I lick him a little bit here put some saliva you can see he might even go away with some armor or something get oiled up kind of like maybe that's be the best way to clean him up and just put some you know some kind of um some oil to detail him or something keep him like glossy look he'll he'll have that black shine back probably that's the best way to actually get him settled in a uh, little nasty stuff in the back maybe I can sand these guys a little bit but more likely it's probably not. Let me see, I can do it. I'm using 600 grit. It's not really doing much for us here anyway. Just kind of wipe off any harsh excessive. That way it looks a little flush and I just doesn't look like it's too bad. Again, this is super glue. This wasn't a proxy. We use straight super glue on this one as well. <laughs> All right, so this guy's the best I could do for him here. It's kind of smooth him out. So we'll leave him alone. The more we touch him, the more it's going to look a little bit more like we're trying so hard on that area. But he's ready to go back as soon as uh, we put the seat and everything back firmly. Okay, let's go and find the other one, the other cap here. Uh, I guess I didn't bring it out. I like to bring it out and get that squared away as well. I might set him up on this table. Or he still might be in here lingering around. There he is. He's like, you forgot about me. No, I didn't. We're coming for you. We'll give these guys a light sand as well. These, these two little ups here. We'll sand them only in the exposed area. Just to be able to get all the little debris out. So have a fresh little place for the paint to actually grip on, right? Oh, sorry. Gonna be a while i guess <laughs> i feel like we're underwater okay so here we go with this guy let's put these guys in here now they're ready to go almost so it wasn't much standing in here but these guys here see this again i'll show you an example so if i take a straight 600 grid right and you see how thick this guy is he has like a little coating on him there you go see he's Pretty thick coating, you can almost stop your fingernail on it. That's pretty thick. So if I take a 600 grit and I just went straight for him like this, really doesn't do much. Well, it will do it over time, but super longer. See that? See that? See that? It doesn't really change his shape at all whatsoever. Uh, unless I'm gonna be doing this for quite a bit of time, like forcefully, right? So that's what, that's why you want to work gradually from a lower number that has a lot more thicker grain than a finer grain sandpaper with higher resolution, more DPI, let's say. Okay, so if I take this guy right now and I use this 150 grid on the same area, gosh, see now, now it's taking shape. It's cutting more of him, see there? We got it, right? So now we're really smoothing him out. Well, not smoothing him out yet, but we're really taking off the dead paint that's around him. We're, or, or we're smoothing him a little bit more. We're flattening him out first before we take out all the scratch marks. See there? Now it's coming out like this. So that's why the difference between using 150 grid versus straight up with the finer grid. Because the finer grid will take you a lot longer to do the job. And so that's why I'm, I'm going first with the 150 grid to get all the rough dirt out. The rough dirt and flaky uh, edge paint before we kind of take it all out much as I can. 
areas that we're going to retouch up on. I'll even try to sharpen this guy and create his circle back. Maybe if I can, maybe if I can't. He was JB Weld. So the more I can give him the definite shape, it'll take proper mold. JB Weld did a great job on this guy. And again, if we don't use it, we'll have it prepared for a backup. I always like to say that because you'll never know when the new stuff doesn't turn out any better than the old stuff. And uh, so I don't throw anything away. But I'm not a collector of old stuff either. You know, I just, you know, one backup should be plenty, not, not keep on just collecting scraps or going out of my way to buy the scraps. And these are a scratch from our OEM, so we might as well just keep them. <sighs> there we go. See there? We got good surface to work with in here. <sighs> there we go. Nice. You can feel it until you can't feel any more difference in paint. But you can't feel the scratches either because it's still a pretty good 150 grit. But you can see it. That's the thing. So when you can see it, that's when, the, be careful with this one. You don't want to trim this tooth anymore. It's already got very little left. So we don't trim anymore. The washers are still in here. I'm not sure if it's double stacked in there or what, but you can see here, it feels like there's two washers in there. See that? Bring it up closer. Look. I think it's not a two washer. I think this is part of the frame. So I'm going to try, well I can't, it's very hard, I can have to get a Phillips or flathead and flick it out of there. I think there's one that's stuck in here already. And yeah, it probably is because I see the little layer. So more than likely when we do put these guys on, we'll make sure we don't give it any extra washer. Uh, because we're going about to hit it with paint. But I will take a screwdriver and just flick it off to make sure it's not double washer in there. Okay, with these guys here, it's really not much. Just kind of clean this area. Oh, let me go back and... Get these guys with the, the 600 grit to make sure I smooth it out. Because the paint will not take out your scratches. If they're deep enough, they'll show the, the little scratch grid on your paint. So if you want a nicer thing, work your way up to a 1,000 grit if you want to. If you really want it show car quality or something. But I think I'm fine. These are just like brake caps. I want to do a decent job. <sighs> just smoothing out the area. Again, we're going to be soaking these and washing them thoroughly anyway. They're not going to be... Uh, left to just simply wipe we're going to probably get it really nice submerged and really you know give it a good bath get all the dirt out of it further <laughs> okay with these guys here again i'm just going to go and work on the the rounded areas here where i just want to make sure that uh, with the new paint it's not going to be taken back from the old stuff These are fine. These are serious. These are still good here. This is okay. It's not nothing happening to it. But if I really want to double check it, I just take my 150 grid, clean a little bit more. So it's like your 150 grid is your paint paint cleaner before you prepare it for the new fresh paint. Okay, that one's ready to go. See there, it's ready to go. This is the next one. See there, it just rubs off any old paint that should have flaked off. We don't want it to flake off after we paint over it, right? We want it to flake off now so new paint can just penetrate to the new rough surface. We're almost like creating the, the teeth grid for the pores, to, the paint pores to go into. There we go, that should be good. Any leftover grid, there again, we could touch up on these, these probably will stick. But if you really want to be double checked to make sure it does stick, get some grid sandpaper, maybe 150 or 300 or, or 200, and just work it and try to get that in there. Now you can go back and soften it out, any deep scratches. Again, these are going to be covered underneath the bars anyway. But if you just want to get good practice of seeing how your sandpaper helps you in certain areas, this will be it. Okay. Do it in a way where you can have a little bit more finger and muscle exercise here. <sighs> Not that you want the finger muscle exercise, but more <sighs> leverage there. There we go. Just want to smooth into any kind of harsh sand from the 150 with the 600 now. Get that all cleaned out of the way. Again, we're going to have to rinse this off first and give it a wipe down cleanly before we actually uh, prepare it to dry. I mean, prepare it to paint. Um, I bought the paint again with primer 
and paint all together so save me one little extra step okay so there you go these guys are ready you can see there I'm not sure if I hit the, this guy with the, the 600 yet so I better do that you see I didn't use all my 600 so and I didn't actually put water in it either sometimes you could try it with water it might work better for you it'll keep all the paint dust from building up and causing a little bit more imperfection now again we're not we're not doing a candy job paint job or anything like that so or else we'd probably be indoor in an airtight sealed room and stuff like that with some ventilation mask and a, a, a real spray gun or anything but we're going to do a decent job here for our amount of work and effort to make it really nice from a spray can there we go again these parts are like less than twenty dollars to replace so it's not like you're going to spend six hours trying to redo a, a part that you could just replace with you know i mean for 20 bucks so it's probably not worth it kind of compare your time flight and frame so this is nice so it's there already i did order these from ncy i believe they retail for about 15 bucks or something like that they're the blue ones they're coming unfortunately they're going to be covered by our plate anyway but they still are pretty nice they'll say ncy in here and it's like a blue color i think the same color as my um uh, brake lever so we'll find out once they come in should come in shortly probably next week so looking forward to that one so here we go these are all the scraps that we're going to be painting and i think they're all set and ready to go what i could do is <laughs> blow these out a little bit or it's actually you know what i should wipe them before i put them in this box uh, this box here will i know it'll be our scrap box it will be the one that we put in temporarily to hold it while it's still wet and then we're going to transfer to the other box but in the meantime i still want to make sure there's no dirt or anything in here less transfer contamination the merrier all right, so here we go. Let's do the wipe and let's put them one by one in their box to be able to transfer shortly into our painting area. So first of all, this guy here. You know, in fact, we can take it out to clean right now. I think we can probably take a hose to it, right? So let's do that. Let's, well, let me do a dry wipe first. I'm gonna do a dry wipe. I'm just gonna wipe it with my shop rag here. See, I'm pretty confident I'm holding it now because this this uh, approximately did is a great job for us. Okay, we're just doing a dry wipe. Now I haven't peeled this guy off yet. I'm not worried about him just yet. He probably would dry in his own time. And I think he's got quite a good, you can see here, a good solid area of that approxy bonding him. See, some of them's even sticking out. There you go, I'm squishing it. Oh, so I'm squishing a little bit. Not that area, it's just like his, the filler uh, compound is kind of like spatical everywhere. I'm just squishing it, it's trying to dry it already. It only takes about 20 minutes, it's advertised. So I think we waited about an hour now. I think it should be plenty of time there. And I'm sure it's gonna be water resistant uh, once we get it all soaked in. Okay, so we're gonna put that guy in there. <laughs> Let's go ahead and we're gonna do a dry wipe just to wipe everything before we, you know, spend our time, you know, rinsing it off. I think that most of the sand scrubbed it for us already, so it's not like we have to scrub it again. Um, just kind of water will do. And then a quick wipe down when it's for it to dry up. All right, there we go. We'll take this off just to make sure. Well, you can probably even hit this guy with paint or a little bit. I don't know. Paint might protect it or it might build up some more weird stuff to it, too. So we got to be careful. Um, the minute we soak in water, we might want to consider wiping it right away. Or else um, the rust will build up to it. All right. There we go. This thing did come off. It didn't have blue Loctite. I would take it all completely off. But since it already has blue Loctite, I mean, oh yeah, it probably does have blue Loctite from a while back. There's just no reason to now. <clears throat> All right, so there we go. This is completely wiped. Putting in here, ready for transferring to get washed. And then bring back to um, get dry. There we go. All right, 
let's go ahead and prepare this guy. All right, we'll, we'll leave all this spatical for a second here. And let's go ahead and we're gonna pretty much get this guy a hose down. All right, where's the other end of this hose? We'll never know. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna set it in place here. Just kind of throw it in the yard. No big deal. This grass ain't gonna hurt it. Let's hope it's just grass. This guy's harder to replace and find. Careful with these guys here. Okay. This is probably the most sensitive one here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is prepare my chop rag. Guy's good, we can use him. He's got a lot of debris from. Let's get a cleaner one. But this guy might sit well. Get the orange one. There's our orange guy. Okay, let's get this guy's a good thorough cleaning. Before we put them back in our box here. A little dry rag in the box. Kind of lower the water pressure a little bit just to make sure. All the dirt and stuff. All right, flip it around. Flip this guy around yet. All right, here we go. Doing a rinse here. Okay, set these guys up here for a second. Should be another one of these, so there we go. Nice and cool. Now I had my torch in front of it. The phone will probably die by now. <laughs> it looks like it just the side of heat or whatever causes it to faint of heart. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Kind of move it a little bit. All the areas there we cannot get. Okay. Let's see a little bit where I'm placing it. Kind of use your hands a little bit just to make sure you break off any spatical that might not just come easily with water. But it should all come though. Alright, so what I'm doing is I'm placing it here. See there? Placing it right there. Not even sure we're gonna paint this guy, but we can still clean him though. That crack. Alright, the last one, the most sensitive one. Sorry, you guys can't see it. There we go. This is the most sensitive one here. Try to get that little sticky residue out. I know he's just been freshly painted here. I mean, freshly uh, 
compound here, but he should be okay though. Pretty confident that That's going to look pretty nice once it's done. And we also, remember we shaved this side as well. Prepare to fit in a little bit better next time around. Kind of give this a rub, make sure you're okay. They even have one that a proxy for bonding like your boat marina. I'm, and it bonds within six hours. But man, can you imagine salt water and stuff? Because salt water is very corrosive, but it's plastic, so I don't know. Plastic uh, sound for marine, so for boats and stuff. You could fix your plastic uh, cover for your boats and stuff. That's just pretty crazy. Okay, I think it's pretty thoroughly now. All right, so we'll let these guys out here just hang out for a second. Gotta be really careful because it drops. It's on me now. So there we go, let that sit before we actually put it back in this basket. I'm almost tempting to really put it in the basket, really. Um, let's do that because I'm not very confident that this guy and the wind and everything can keep tolerate it. So let's just shake it off a little bit. There we go. Better be safe than sorry, right? Shake it off a little bit. Shake it off what you can. There we go. See there, comes back to a little ugly white. That's okay. 